Henri de Toulouse-Lautrec was born in Albi, France, in 1864. Most of his life was spent in Paris, where, as he matured, he adopted the palette and rapid brushwork of the Impressionist and Post-Impressionist, but never aligned himself with one particular style. Lautrec's obsession with the underbelly of Parisian society set him apart from his predecessors. The dives and hounds of the demi-monde, the café concert, the masked balls and the dance halls of late 19th century Paris enthralled him. From childhood, Lautrec suffered from a rare congenital bone disease, which was the product of family intermarriage. While he was bedridden, Lautrec turned to drawing and painting and so began his extraordinary artistic career. An artist and family friend, René Princeteau, gave Lautrec his first lessons in drawing. After moving to Paris, Lautrec regularly visited Princeteau's studio. Later, Lautrec attended art classes at the studios of the conservative academic painters Léon Bonnat and Fernand Cormont. At these studios, Lautrec received traditional academic training, copying the drawings and engravings of the masters, live drawing and painting of nude models in classical poses. While studying at the Atelier Cormont, Lautrec met many talented artists, including Vincent van Gogh and Émile Bernard. Paris was transformed from a medieval capital into a city of wide boulevard, grand buildings and stately gardens in the 19th century. It became an important subject for the Impressionist artists such as Claude Monet, Pierre-Auguste Renoir, Marie Cassatt and Camille Pissarro. As an art student, Lautrec saw the seventh exhibition of Impressionist artists and was taken with their new ideas of unfinished canvases and use of pure color. Lautrec began to try out the ideas, adopting modern subject matter, a lighter palette and feathery brush trucks. The principal distinction between the work of the Impressionist and Lautrec's art was the pivotal role of the figure. When the Impressionist set out to capture the changing appearance of the outdoors, for Lautrec, this held no appeal. He stated, Only the figure exists. Landscape is and should only be an accessory. The pure landscape painter is just crude. The landscape should only be used to better understand the character of the figure. Many of Lautrec's female models were lower-class working women. One of Lautrec's first important models was Carmen Godin, whom he met during his student days. He was enamored with her golden hair and her modest, almost world-weary appearance. Early compositions of Carmen were in a realistic style, with a dark background. Whilst later works were in an impressionist manner, using a lighter palette, or a pointed style incorporating smaller brush trucks. Subsequently, Lautrec sought out friends to pose as characters in narrative scenes inspired by tales of the demi-monde in music or literature. Lautrec and his friends inhabited the Grand Boulevard of Paris as young men about town, Boulevardier or Flaneur. For the visual artist, the Flaneur was an ideal subject to represent the new Paris. 
He was a well-dressed and educated man with elegant manners who could be seen promenading along the boulevard, seated in the city's arcades or amongst the crowd at the race course, the jockey club or the opera. The year 1891 was significant for Lautrec in terms of his artistic development. Ten of his paintings, including three portraits, were shown at the seventh exhibition of the Société des Artistes Indépendants. The portraits were of his friends, Gaston Bonnefoy, a young man who had recently returned from Saigon, Louis Pascal, Lautrec's dashing cousin, and Henri Bourges, who had just become a doctor of medicine. All three were young men of good fortune. In Lautrec's compositions, they appear in silhouetted form in either full or three-quarter length. Houses of Tolerance, Maison de Tolerance, were established in Paris during the early 19th century to regulate prostitution. Luxurious establishments, Maison de Luxe, were located in the suburbs of the well-to-do. Alternatively, less wealthy men queued at the slaughterhouses, Maison d'abattage, for a liaison in miserable surrounds. Considered a significant subject of modern life, prostitution captured the attention of both writers and visual artists. The dissolute nature of the brothels appealed to Lautrec, as did the matter-of-fact transactions and the unselfconscious attitude of the prostitutes. Accepted as a regular visitor, Lautrec was afforded access to the private life of the prostitutes. When Lautrec discovered Montmartre, he found a new and exciting repository of subject matter. Montmartre had become popular with artists as a cheap place to live and work and provided a fascinating subject for Lautrec. The characters depicted by Lautrec were the inhabitants of the Parisian demi-monde. Aristide Bruyant, the singer-songwriter and impresario, La Goulou, the Moulin Rouge dancer of the Dieu de Chahut, Yves Gilbert, who sang the haunting songs of desperate people, and Jane Averill, with her dynamic dancing, all thrilled audiences with their performances and enthralled Lautrec. Lautrec is a preeminent figure in the history of poster design. Moulin Rouge, La Goulue, was Lautrec's first and largest poster. When he appeared in the streets of Paris in 1891, his reputation as a major artist was established. Revolutionary pictorial devices such as silhouetted figures were inspired by the popular shadow theatre and the work of Japanese artist Kitagawa Utamaro. The sinuous lines, application of flat color, and beautiful patterning reveal Lautrec's love of ukiyo-e woodblock prints. Lautrec enjoyed the stage in all its forms, and from the 1890s, the theater became a particular obsession. He frequented performances at the Comédie Française, Théâtre Libre and Théâtre de l'Oeuvre for the atmosphere rather than the plays themselves. He was captivated by the artificial lighting and the spectacle of the audience, the theatre as a grand tableau of human activity. During his final years, Lautrec returned to his favourite themes, the café, the brasseries and the masked ball. They were all subjects that captured the vivacity and excitement of Paris. His later works are executed in stunning patchworks of rich colors, applied with sketchy brushwork and sophisticated washes. 
Lautrec's final paintings are composition of great verve. <laughs>